Hey guys, doing things a little bit different today. We're gonna make um best ever Instapot chili. I believe the recipe is called anyway, it's really good. This is just how I make it. How I make it, I will do my best to link to it in the um oh what am I gonna do? I'll put a link in the description. But anyways, you take your meat, are to prepare it according to the recipe. <clears throat> Believe me, it's an awesome trick. We're gonna brown it in batches. And here we go. Let the oil get nice and hot. Brown it in batches. So, get that nice, good, and brown. Oil oh, nice and brown. Let me brown this up, then I'll get back to you in a little while and I'll show you. All right, guys, I've added the last little bit of meat. I'm just gonna brown it up. And I think I forgot to tell you, you put it on, let's see if I can show you. Put the Instapot on on 284 degrees, so probably medium about there. And I usually set it for about 30 minutes. Let it heat up in there with about two tablespoons of oil so it gets nice and hot. And like I said, do the stuff in batches. Again, I'm doing this recipe how I like it, so I'm gonna quick brown this, and before I add anything else, I will get right back to you. Okay, guys, while that is bubbling away, you can see that without the good. Um, but while that's bubbling away, let's talk about something extra important. I found it to be quite perfect for two pounds, a little much for my pot at one pound, but everybody's different. So, what I always say, what my wife always tells me, I should say is that um, first you make it according to the recipe and then you manipulate it once you're used to it so um, <clears throat> what the recipe calls for is two tablespoons of ancho or regular chili powder two tablespoons of cumin two teaspoons of oregano one teaspoon of granulated garlic or garlic powder and a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper Add more or less according to your taste. You like it spicy, add more. You like it less spicy, add less. It's okay. We're here to have fun. Now, um, my wife doesn't really like cumin, so I substituted, uh, so I substituted taco seasoning for cumin because it is in it normally. So, and she just likes to match the flavor. And then for the chili powder, what I actually did was I mixed a couple of different chilies. <laughs> Boom, you know, the little bag spices in the grocery store that are usually, you know, in the Mexican spices. You know, they'll have like California chilies, Astro chilies, all kinds of different chili powders I already prepared. I bought a couple of those, I mixed them up. They're like a buck each. A couple of different chili powders, mixed them up, and boom, there you go. You got awesome chili powder for cheap. But anyways, that is my thing, and I am going to add now, I am going to add right now, once this is done burning up, it's not quite there yet if you see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's not quite there, but it's getting there. So give me a few more minutes, we've talked about spice, I'll let you know if I forgot anything, it's a long list. Okay, let's see my to-do list. Go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work. And I forgot to mention, it is a best ever gluten-free mix. So you can make this gluten-free. It's really good. Um, the meat is pretty much browned. I'm sure, well, to a point that I don't mind. I'm going to add and sweat out my onions a little bit. What that means is they become a little bit softer, a little more translucent. You're gonna make them kind of, the longer you cook onions on a lower heat, the sweeter they tend to get. So when you sweat them out, you're making them a little bit lighter in color, a little bit more translucent. You're making them soft. Soft enough that you can easily pierce them with a fork. And we're gonna let those cook in there with the meat for a little while. I totally forgot to tell you how many onions I'm adding. Now, the recipe I believe calls for one large onion or like a large medium onion or something like that. I don't really pay attention to those because I like onions. Yeah, I know. 
But, hey, you know, if you watch um, Holes enough, you find out onions are pretty good for you. The movie Disney Holes, it's awesome. It tells you a lot about onions. But anyways, I add roughly three small onions, which is about one and a half large onions. And I've got them diced fairly fine. I've got them julienned, actually. I used, cheated, used the mandolin instead of cutting them out. So anyways, I'm going to add those, let them sweat out a little bit, and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, I added the onions, but I forgot one of the little thing. The recipe does call for about three teaspoons of garlic. If you can see that, I probably have it upside down. Anyways, I like to put in three teaspoons. I do love garlic, but I hate prepping it, so I buy this stuff. Spice World minced garlic. It's finely chopped up. It's really good. And it'll be really yummy and it's good just to let the onions sweat a little bit or get to that point and then add in the garlic so it doesn't burn. Burnt garlic tastes really, really bad. You know that nasty tinny flavor you get sometimes from opening a tin can that's a little bit old? Uh, pretty gross. Anyway, we're gonna do that and then I'll be right back. All right, I added the garlic and going by Spice World, that is about a half a teaspoon per clove. So that is roughly a teaspoon and a half. That's what I normally put in. You can put in more if you want, or less if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's again according to your taste. But like I say, I suggest go to um, go to the recipe. Go to the link down below for the recipe. Follow the recipe first. Then, then, after you make it a few times or even once, you're gonna adjust it a little bit. Now it comes to spice of the spice. I put in, I put in roughly, the recipe says roughly half of it. And you know, just kind of guesstimate, it's okay. And then um, I'm also gonna try adding a couple shots of Worcestershire, French's Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Yeah, however you say it. Anyway, I'm gonna put a couple shots of that because it adds a nice smoky flavor. And you're gonna let that mix in, you're gonna cook it, and you're gonna let it get little brown bits on the bottom. It's okay. Because we're gonna be deglazing the pan later. And if you don't know what that is, I will explain it to you. It's not very hard. It's a fancy sounding word. As one of the quotes in my favorite books, it says, if we don't have fancy sounding words for things, no one will think it's very impressive. But anyways, let it brown up, let that stuff mix in, let it soak in, let it kind of marinate or get married with everything. Let all the flavors meld together. And then we will go a little bit further and I will get ready for the next step. Again, I doubled everything in the in this recipe but the spice everything is doubled but the spice so we're gonna need two cups I know it's a little more than you know three-quarter cup and then you know double that is one and a half but I've used about two cups of beef stock or beef uh, uh, oh crap I can't think of the name but anyways beef stock so I use that and I use that to declaze the pan. So in a minute, I will be with you and I will declaze the pan. Okay guys, now comes the fun part. We're gonna deglaze it. Okay, first what we do, let me see if I can show you. We take our instant pot here and we actually turn it off. Just turn it off. Because you don't want to deglaze it with heat going into it. So, now what you do to deglaze it is you take your beef broth, got it this time, or beef stock. I like stock. It's got a little more flavor. But again, it doesn't really matter. And you pour that in there. Now, all those little bits that you could feel getting in there cooking, you're going to want to get out, okay? With the water, they're going to start coming up. You're going to want to kind of work at it, scrape them up. See how I'm oh, working at it? Oh, I got it. Okay. And you're going to want to get them up. You can feel them. It's gonna take a little minute, take your time, deglaze, deglaze the pan. I'm gonna deglaze this, and then um, we'll go from there. I'll be right back. Okay guys, next part is easy. Okay, we've got our pot off. 
And we've got some nice fire roasted tomatoes. I like fire roasted diced tomatoes. They just fit really well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare this to go under pressure. So what we do, we dump in the tomatoes. We do not stir. Important, do not stir. According to the recipe, and I believe this, tomatoes will stick to the bottom and cause it not to reach pressure properly. So, we throw on some fire roasted to tomato. Oh yeah, just to tell you, if you like Kroger, you usually you can find them, fire roasted tomatoes. They're really good. So I'm adding four cans of tomatoes. Again, I doubled it, beef. Then we add our Instapot lid. Make sure it's nice and long. Make sure the vent is to ceiling. See there it's sealed. It's not sealed there. It's, uh, if I can turn it there, it's sealed. Okay, now we're gonna set it to, uh, I believe the recipe says manual setting 12 minutes. But what I kinda cheat, I hit this steam vegetables button right here and it gets me all that and then I just adjust it to any pretty much any time I want the cook time so we'll just double that go about 25 minutes and then you hit start and let it do its thing Set it. <laughs> you're gonna let it do its thing come under pressure cook and then the best part is you want to let it sit and come out of pressure by itself. So you can just leave it at this point for a while. As I'm back, this part's a little hard to do with one hand. So I wanna just show you what I use for beans. Okay, they, the recipe calls for one can of beans. I like beans, so I'm putting in more. I use one can of black beans. Uh, if I can show it online. Ah, uh, there we go, black beans. I like to watch my salt, like I said, I'm a little bigger. So I've got hypertension, I like to watch my salt intake, and you know, anything canned, it's usually got a lot of salt in it, so you, you know, you don't have to add it or anything. So just watch it. So what do they mean by drain and rinse? Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm just dumb or not, just, I probably am. But when I started cooking, I could not for the life of me figure that out because I thought they were talking about something fancy. No, they're just talking about draining them out of the can and rinsing them. Why? Because they're usually stored in a solution that needs to be rinsed off. Not really, I mean, it's edible, but it's not really good to eat. It's kind of like that one sugar Then they make really cool sculptures out of. It's sugary and still technically eat it, but it's not very good. So we drain and rinse those. Put them in our little bowl here. And then um, I like to get at least one can of chili beans. Southwest does these. But what they are is they're just a uh, flavored, flavored pinto bean ready for chili. You don't have to drain and rinse these. These are ready to go right out of the can. These are ready to go right out of the can, so you just dump those in there. But I like to keep the can because there's always some goodness stuck on the can. I'll show you why in a minute. And then I do one can of white beans. Now, when I say white beans, I mean I'm talking like if you've ever had, if you've ever had beans in Frank's white beans, those little beans. I'm talking those. I'm not talking bigger ones like wax beans, canela beans, navy beans, all the other kind of white beans. No, I want the little guy. I want the little skinny white guy. Hey there, welcome to Big Dos TV. Today I'm with my friend Ozellis and we're gonna be beatboxing in the hood. <laughs> That's what I want. Why? Because these absorb flavor. These are so good, they absorb flavor. And they're very mild and they're very easy and kids love them. But anyway, so I'm going to drain and rinse those. And what I do to drain and rinse them is I just put them in a nice little mess drainer here. I shake them around under the water. But I usually put just a little bit of water in there because there's always a little, a little bit of water in the can because there's always a little bit left over. And I just shake them and drain them, shake them and drain them. And then 
take this can, same thing, a little bit of stuff left over. Take it in, dump it in, it's alright. And they're all going to the same place, so it doesn't really matter if they mesh flavors. Okay, so then I just put them in here, and they're all ready to go. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm gonna make this short and sweet. But, um, check out the timer here. It is taking 40 minutes to get down to temp. You just let it get down to temp. Don't rush it. It's okay. It's developing those flavors. What does that mean for you? You are gonna look even more awesome. Looking good. Alright. Developing those flavors is key to this, okay? So what we're gonna do, we unlock it. Oh, let's find a fish for that. We're gonna add the rest of the spice. Okay, and then we're gonna add our beans. All right. Oh, all that in there. That goodness, give it a little stir. Look at that, oh, it looks pretty and yummy. Alright, a little stir. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. A little stir. And now, we are going to cover it. I've got a nice little glass lid. If you don't have a glass lid, the recipe says you can just loosely put the, um, that lid on there. Uh, it's okay. And then what we're gonna do? We'll hit nice and stop. And we're gonna hit saute brown down here, and then we want to adjust the temperature so it simmers. All right. What does that mean? What is a simmer? Well, a simmer is basically a very, very low boil. Very, very low, tiny, gentle. And what does that do? That's gonna thicken it up. It's gonna make it taste good. So let's get down the pressure temp. And so where is the simmer? Where is it about? It is roughly about anywhere from Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this simmer, then I'm gonna stir it every once in a while. It's okay if it gets a little, if you know, if you don't stir it that often, it's okay. You're just gonna get some bits on the bottom. When you do stir it, make sure you get those up because you don't, you don't want anything impeding that yummy flavor. You don't want anything burnt. The stuff on the bottom does tend to burn. And especially with this, it's okay. We're gonna set it to start on a simmer. So around 200 degrees, let it sit and simmer. I usually. Uh, you know, I usually let it simmer about 20 minutes or so, or so, stirring it every five, five or so minutes. Anyways, I'll be right back. I, I but you know, cooking is a constant experiment. But one thing I did was I turned the temperature up a little bit. Hopefully, you can see there. I turned it up to about 210. So, anyways, and then one thing I like to do, I don't know who else does it. I've never heard of it going in chili this way but I like a nice thick chili unless you can stand a fork in it you know I mean what's that old stack commercial it ain't done till you stand a fork in it I buy it. how rich and thick this rich and thick Dennis's chili the taste that stands alone mm. I like a nice thick chili so what I do I'm in a little slurry just let it do its thing because that's how corn starch works you heat it up, it kind of stretches out. You cool it down, it shrinks. Okay, so it is at about 210 degrees. And I'm gonna go outside. Okay, like I said, cooking is a constant experiment. I did not let it boil properly. So, like I was saying, and you know, you let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes stirring it every so often and then the best part is once it's done you just turn off 
you turn off your because you turn off your Instapot, and then you just put it on slow cook, and put it on the lowest setting on slow cook. Why do you do that? Because it'll just marry more flavors. If you're not ready to eat right then, put it on slow cook. Let it sit for a little while. It's not going to do you any, anything. It's only going to do you positive things. It's not going to hurt you. It's only going to help you. It's a good thing. So we've got a nice little simmer going right here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. That's, that's what a simmer should look like. And when you stir it, it might stop bubbling, that's okay. Again, make sure when you stir it, get all the stuff off the bottom that you can. Might have to work a little bit, it's okay. So let it come up to the temperature. Let it simmer, stir it. If you're ready to eat, it's ready to go. If not, stick it on the slow cook and just put it on the lowest temperature setting. About, I think the lowest temperature setting is about 180 something, somewhere around there. Just cover it, put it on the lowest temperature setting. And you're done. Forget it. It's awesome. It's good. This chili is great on rice. It's great on its own. It's great on chips. Eat it however you want. But that's about it. That's about all you do. Nothing more. You just set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. It's so easy. It's so good. And there's my chili. Alright, time to go pick up the other kids. And I will see you guys next time. Love ya. Bye. Well, let me do that again. I love ya. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Alright, sorry, guys. One other thing. Right before I go and get the kids, I checked out the low setting on the slow cook for the Kasori Instapot. And I think this is the same for Instapot Grand. I'm not sure. It's actually the low setting is about. 193 for about eight hours so anyways you know what that's pretty awesome i love you bye